So Battles of Legend Monstrous Revenge is coming out in just about a week from now and I really wanted to cover the best cards in that set. It's a special set with 40 secrets and 62 ultra rares and it has both new cards and reprints. So whether you're a competitive player trying to make your deck better or just someone collecting cards, this set is probably great for you. So without any further ado, let's get right into this video. So the first card I wanted to cover is Iggy Azalea. No, not that one, but that one. In the past, I kept saying that that card was going to be in Cyberstorm Access, but <laughs> what can I say? I'm really stupid and don't know how to read. What can I say? I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh player. You think I'm an exception to the rule? But yeah, the wait is finally over and this card is going to be extremely good in a bunch of decks, especially in Sky Striker. Because yes, it is a Sky Striker card. No shit. But it's also a generic staple that's being played in pretty much any deck that can summon light or dark monsters because it's kind of like a combination of Nightmare Phoenix or Cerberus, but without the discard. Everything about this card is awesome and the fact that it generically allows you to access your Sky Striker engine is fantastic. So now in Sky Striker, you can literally break, just draw a bunch of mind controls and change of heart and still get access to Ray and engage. So next up is a super specific yet insanely powerful card in its own archetype and that would be Golden Rule. That card's like a 20 out of 10 in the Crystal Beast deck because it gets you two gems from your deck into the Spell and Shop zone and then revives back a Crystal Beast monster from the Hand or Grave. So in other words, it enables really nasty Ruby Carbuncle shenanigans. While we're on the topic of equip spells, the new Bradamante Infernoble Knight monster is actually pretty nice. That girl can discard herself in order to equip any of your warrior monster with any equip spell directly from your deck, so it's a nice one of, but it's not any more than that. But yeah, with that card, you can get yourself Durandal, which gets you any Infernoble Knight monster, or Living Fossil, which is a monster reborn, pretty much anything you're missing. Now speaking of niche one-ofs, Blackwing Shawarma the Wanning Moon is actually a pretty nice card in the Blackwing deck. If you have a 2000 or more attack monster on the field, you can special summon that Blackwing monster for free and it's a level 2 monster and it also has a really nasty graveyard effect if you control a Blackwing Synchro. And the Blackwing deck really lacked, you know, interruptions unless you're willing to play some bad cards or play into Nibiru or Hat Shops, so you know a card like that with pretty much no drawbacks is really freaking awesome. But yeah, I've also heard about people considering this card in Sprite and to be fair it's kind of copium. Now, a card that actually is level 2 but isn't Copium would have to be Assault Synchron. That card can special summon itself directly from the hand for free and locks you under Synchro monsters only from the extra deck while it is on the field. It also makes you take 700 damage when it's special summoned and it actually looks like a bad thing but you can take advantage of that. For example, you could be using the effect of Black Feather Dark Rage Dragon to mill 5 cards whenever you take effect damage. So yeah, it's kind of like a Chaos Ruler but at home. Look, it's almost the same thing, okay? But yeah, you could also play Assault Synchron in Blackwing actually because, uh, you know, you don't take damage thanks to Black Wing the Dragon, and then you get a counter which kind of turns on a few of your cards. But the graveyard effect of Assault Synchron is really insane because in case you get like kaiju or, you know, your cards banished or tributed by Nibiru, you can recover one of your dragon monsters pretty much for free. Free extender, free protection, nothing can go wrong with it. Now there's another very similar monster, but it has nothing to do with dragons, but this time with insects and it's Guard Mantis. It has niche synergy with digital bugs and it's also relatively uh, good in Beat Trooper, but that's pretty much it. But again, we don't have Maxi in the TCG, so nobody gives two shits about insects. And besides, the plants eat insects for breakfast. We've got two new plant support cards, and both of them are really good. The first one is Caddy Cord, a field spell searcher. And the second one is Rose Shaman, so you can either tribute it to get a draw or banish it from your graveyard and then recycle back a plant monster from the grave to hand. And if it's a high level plant monster, you can also foolish a plant from deck to grave. So yeah, pretty nice synergy with Lily Borea, which is a plant monster, so you can get your Therion engine started. Now, speaking of Therion, Scatty Corn can search the Therion field spell or Rika Concon if you want to, and then, you know, get some stuff going in the Rika deck. More options for your Lone Fire Blossom or Aroma Surfy Jasmine, I will take that any day of the week. And if you're a big fan of having a lot of options at your disposal, try to check out the cards Shadows Light and Duality. Not part of Duality, but like actual Duality. Both of these spell cards are really reminiscent to Metamorphoses, but only for light and dark monsters. And ironically, the Cyber Dragon deck is actually one of the best decks to be able to use Duality because you can transform your Cyber Dragon into Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon, and then send Hertz and Core, get back the core, attack three times, and do a lot of things. Or you can trade Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon into Cyber Twin Dragon and go for an OTK. And the grave effects of both of these cards are also really good, allowing you to draw one card or get an extra normal summon. Overall, I really recommend looking into these cards if you're planning on playing a Chaos deck like Cyber Dragon or maybe even Dragon Link. Now, if Zane is the only one to get a little bit of love, Kite might actually end up being 
jealous. And that's exactly why two new Galaxy support cards are introduced in that set, and they're both really good. Photon Jumper searches any Photon or Galaxy Ice Spell or Trap card directly from her deck when it is sent to the graveyard. Doesn't have to be sent there by a card effect, and can be sent there from any location. This opens up brand new combos and also makes the deck infinitely more consistent than before. And in case you wanted more raw power at your disposal, Last Hope Numbers is also a really good card. It's always treated as a Galaxy Ice card, meaning it's searchable by Photon Jumper and has a really nasty effect. With it, you're going to be able to revive back two monsters from the grave and then immediately overlay for a number exceeds monster using these two monsters, and then after that, you can only summon from the extra deck one time. But if you're planning on going for Draglubion into Numeron Dragon, it doesn't matter because you only need one more summon after that and then you kill your opponent. Alright, so how about a new card that might actually help uh, an already existing deck recover from a certain hit from the ban list? Link Decoder really helps the math mech deck at allowing you to just summon a bunch more monsters and turns on some new combos because you can actually now abuse Firewall Dragon Singularity and potentially go into Terahertz or Firewall Dragon Dark Fluid. And math mech is already really good, so this new support is even more appreciated. But yeah, cool new cards aside, this set also has some really nice reprints, so it can help you build decks like Punk or Labyrinth. Anyways, that's all I had to say for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts about Battles of Legend, Monstrous Revenge in the comment section below. I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.